In this presentation, we will add loan payments using the bank feed feature. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to go down to the reports on the left-hand side. Let's open up the old balance sheet, the favorite report here. Changing the dates up top from 010120 to, let's make it uh, 123120, running that report. Then we'll duplicate this tab by going to the tab up top, right-clicking on it, and duplicating it. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to go down to the reports once again. We're going to be opening up the other report that we're opening up quite often. That's why it's in the favorites up top here. We're going to be opening up the PNL, the profit and loss. Changing the dates up top, same date. Well, let's change the date range just to the date range we're working on here, which is going to be the 040120 to 043020 and then run that report then we're going to duplicate the tab up top right clicking on it and duplicating it so now we got the balance sheet p and l we're then going to go to the tab to the left and then check out our bank feeds that's what we've been working on we're going to be opening up the bank feeds closing up the old hamburger on the top uh left removing the burger and then scrolling down and we have these two items which are going to be chase those we know are going to be loan payments so when we see those items we're going to say, ah, those are loan payments. What are we going to do with the loan uh, payments? Now, the loan payments are typically going to be paying down, obviously, a loan. If we go to the balance sheet then, and I close up the hamburger and hold, up, hold down control, scroll up a bit, you'll recall that in the past, I'm going to go down to the liability section down here, that we had a, a deposit. And the deposit into our system was for something other than uh, from a customer. It was from a loan. And we had to put those not to income, but to this liability count of a loan. Now we're going to be paying off the loan. So the tricky thing with paying off a loan is typically if it's going to be a monthly payment, oftentimes loans are set up in such a way that you have basically a principal portion or both a principal portion and an interest portion. And we would need to break those out. So if we see the money going out that's a loan, then you would think maybe we need to have an amortization table which might look something like this, where we can, where we would have the loan payment being broke out between the interest and principal portion. And not only that, but the interest and principal portions will differ as we go. This is a problem for the bank feeds, because when we add things on the bank feeds, we would like it to be very simple, only having one other account affected so that we can enter this into the system very quickly. So what I would suggest doing here is working with someone else possibly i mean you could do this yourself at the end of each month or at the end after each payment or at the end of each month or at the end of the year you make an adjustment for the the interest portion of the loan payment and when you record the actual loan then we're going to take the payment on the loan and just simply record it as a reduction the full thing as a reduction to the loan principal and then periodically monthly or yearly we take our amortization schedule and we figure out the the uh, amount that should be allocated to interest. So that's what I would suggest, you know, a method you might suggest doing. And if you work with a CPA firm uh, or a tax preparation firm, then you can do that on a periodic basis. And we've we've talked before in, in the accounting course on how to make an amortization table. Sometimes the, the loan doesn't have an amortization table and whatnot. You might have to make one out to break out the interest and the principal and even if you have an amortization table you still have a different amount allocated to interest and principal each time which makes it difficult even if you have three accounts that you're going to be dealing with uh, to memorize the transaction and on the bank feeds you'd like it to just have two accounts that you can record so that the bank feeds can memorize the transaction therefore to make an easy system you could say hey every time a loan comes out that's from this particular loan I'm just going to decrease the actual principal portion of the loan and then adjust it periodically, either monthly or yearly, and possibly have some help to do that with like a CPA firm or tax preparer that can help to make the amortization table and then make any adjustments to it, which would basically be breaking out the interest portion of the loan balance. So let's take a look at what that would look like. If I uh, minimize this, go back to our... Uh, bank feeds. I'm going to go down to these two loan payments. I'm going to go into this first one. And so again, note that it only has some other category. I'm going to choose the vendor is going to be Chase again. We can add Chase as a vendor. It's a bank. So it's not like exactly a vendor because we're not really buying anything from them. But we're kind of buying, you know, the use of money. So we're going to Chase. 
but vendor we want to put in some vendor um, when we can so we're going to use chase as the vendor and then the other side i'm just simply going to put the whole thing and not break out the interest in principal simply putting the whole thing to the loan payable so I, actually i put it under notes payable notes payable and I i'm just going to choose the first one here i'm not going to get into detail about different types of notes so i'm going to put the whole thing to the note that we have on the book it's going to then memorize that transaction and again, note the difference here, this 13559, that's the payment that we're going to make that we should be breaking out to some format of interest in principal. So we're just going to put it all to principal right now and think of adjusting entries to do that later. So I'm going to go ahead and save that or add that. It's going to then find the next one and say, hey, here's another one. Do you want us to do the same thing to it? It put that in, in the recognized items. We're going to say yes and go ahead and say add to that one as well. I'm not going to add any more rule than that. I'm going to have them keep showing up as recognized so I can kind of check them. Then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. Let's scroll back up top. Let's go into the checking account, see what has happened. Scrolling down, we're going to then uh, go down here. We're looking for the uh, expenses that are going to chase. Here's one, and uh, there is the other. So if I go into one of these items, we, of course, will then go into an expense type of form, just like we have seen for many, most of these transactions. There it is. The other side, uh, going to the notes payable. Closing this back out, going back up top, we're going to then go back and the other side is going to go to the notes payable so that's going to be a liability account down here here it is it should be in here somewhere in the notes payable scrolling back down we have the two items to chase and those items are decreasing the liability to chase now again it's going down by the full amount here what we would have to do then periodically is then go into this is what the adjusting entry would be if i for example started with a seventy-two thousand dollar loan and then I posted the full thing, these two payments, down. So if I if I posted these two payments and decreased the $70,000 loan, instead of breaking out the interest, the loan balance would be down to the to the 69,283. When it when it should be at the 69,878, um, if we accounted for the interest, and the difference would be the 596 uh, which is going to be the interest portion here so we would have to make a periodic entry that would basically increase the loan balance and record the interest expense because the way we've done it we have no expense no kind of rent on the money that has been recorded and periodically we would have some adjusting entry which would adjust for the interest expense portion and at the end of the of the year we might have to break out between short term and long term depending on our needs for reporting purposes as well the the short term being the principal portion that's going to be due within a year long term being the principal portion that's not that's due after a year's time period